we are doing our presentation on healthy versus unhealthy relationships. So we are mental health ambassadors and MHA is a student peer to peer mental health promotion program that focuses on mental health awareness, resiliency and self care. Our uh, MHA group was developed by Dr. Lanzi and Honors College student Juhi Agrawal in partnership with the School of Public Health, Honors College and Student Counseling Services. So we're all just gonna go through and introduce ourselves uh, just to start. So I'm Lindsay Shelton. I am a junior right now and I'm double majoring in international studies and Spanish language. Uh, I am a mental health ambassador because uh, mental health is just really important to me. It's part of my life every single day and it's really important that I can help other people understand why it's so important to them as well. I'm Alex. I'm a sophomore majoring in neuroscience and I'm a mental health ambassador because I'm passionate about mental health and I think it's a really important thing to be promoting around campus. Um, hey guys, I'm Andrew Yarbrough. I'm a first year biology student. Um, I, I, I'm doing this program for pretty much the same reasons they talked about. A, a lot of us have a lot of experience with it and it's a really important thing to be aware of. All right, and hi, my name is Mackenzie Badenhop. I am a nursing major. I am, my class Payson is junior, and I'm a mental health ambassador because I wish that I would have had somebody when I needed it most. Um, so now I'm gonna go through our goals for today. All right, so, um, our goal for today is for you to understand the signs of healthy and unhealthy relationships and be able to discern between those. Uh, this conversation can be really important right now because the pandemic is causing all of these new dynamics in our lives and creating all these new strains on our relationships that weren't previously there. One of our main motivators for doing this presentation is the fact that some people don't even realize that certain relationships or part of their relationships are unhealthy um, and are actually hurting them more than they think, um, more than they know. So we wanna shed some light on this topic to give you all a better understanding of this and how to incorporate some healthy principles into your relationships to help them be fulfilling. Also, we wanna connect you to some resources that can help you that are available through UAB, but then also some that are available just for everyone as well. So now we're going to move on to our disclaimer for today. So this is the south coast of Polynesia. Uh, I would like to, to start off by saying that relationships can look very different. There is no perfect relationship. It will not always be a paradise like this lovely picture that we see here. Even healthy relationships have complications sometimes and that's okay. But there does come a point when relationships can become unhealthy and we'll kind of talk about those characteristics um, today. So if you are feeling like you need to talk to someone like throughout this presentation um, and you're worried, please know that we are peer-to-peer -peer educators. So we are not professionals, but we do want to connect you to some services that can help you if you do feel like you want to talk to a professional. Um, we, we are in collaborated with Student Counseling Services um, and they're, they're a really great source at UAB. Um, and also we want to let you know that you can leave the meeting at any time for class or work or if you feel uncomfortable. Uh, and also those resources that I mentioned are also in the chat right now if you need to go look at those. So now I'm going to um, help. Alex is going to talk about some healthy, some characteristics of healthy relationships. So what are some typical characteristics of a healthy relationship? You might not clearly see all of these in your relationships. That doesn't mean it isn't healthy simply because it doesn't check all the boxes. Each relationship is different, but some common characteristics that you might see in a healthy relationship include things like feeling safe when you're with your partner, feeling supported and loved, having the option of privacy when you want it, and still being able to feel independent, having mutual trust and honesty, being able to share feelings or concerns you have with your partner without fear of consequences, and being able to maintain relationships with others at the same time. Um, and now Mackenzie is gonna talk about some characteristics of an unhealthy relationship. 
All right. So some of some of the characteristics of unhealthy relationships are, are listed here. Um, so there can be an attempt to control, which which is where one person makes the decisions or tells the other person what to do. And it can play out as the partner actually isolating uh, the other from his or her family, which can be seen in these next two bullet points. So you might not have any common friends with this person, and this person can have a lack of respect for your friends or your family. Um, some other characteristics are a lack of fairness or equality. And so this can be something like arguments aren't settled fairly, or there's an unequal control of resources like money or food. Uh, there can be a lack of privacy, which can be seen in these next two bullet points, like feeling forced or pressured into something that you don't want, or having to feel feeling the need to justify your actions, like who you're with or what you're doing or how much time you're spending there. And so with that last bullet point, a lot of parental relationships have that component in there. So just because you might see some of these characteristics in your relationship doesn't mean that it's automatically written off as unhealthy or bad. It just means that there, there might be some things that you want to evaluate and some boundaries that you might want to set in place. Um, again, relationships require that we put time and effort into them so that they can grow and develop just like we do. Hey guys. Um, so part of why we're doing this presentation for the mental health ambassadors is that it really can have an effect on your mental health. Um, so many people can see these individual traits of an unhealthy relationship and not see them collectively. And, and what we mean by that is that it can be really easy to view some of these as singularities as opposed to parts of a whole. Um, like, for example, let's say your partner does something that's clearly unhealthy. They show no respect for your privacy, no respect for your friends or family. This is where these bullets come into play. Um, it, it's best to acknowledge these traits and, and not just pass them off as smaller things because they could eventually be compile and become overwhelming and you wouldn't realize it until after it's already a huge problem. It, it's better not to justify these behaviors by blaming them on other events like, oh, well, they've just been having a bad few weeks, so it's okay if they're, if they're being unhealthy with me right now, or this is my fault for starting it, stuff like that. Um, and then it's also incredibly important to hold yourself and your partner or your friend accountable. Um, and then let's also talk about how these can affect mental health, because I said before that they would, but I, I mentioned more just ways. Let's, let's talk more specifically. Um, so while an unhealthy relationship does not always translate directly to poor mental health, it can have some very negative influences. Um, I do want to say really quick that we want to make it clear that an unhealthy relationship does not explicitly translate to a reduced mental health quality, but it can play a key role. Um, so as far as multiple stressors go, this is the same as in any environment where you have multiple stressors. We always talk about identifying these stressors so that when you can, like when, when you can do this, it, it helps you manage stress. It helps you manage anxiety a lot better. Um, and, and this is the same thing as it, it applies exactly the same way into relationships. Um, and then for mental health issues, some of these relationships such as codependent ones, um, or in some cases, abusive ones, those can contribute to things like low self-esteem, anxiety, and in some cases, PTSD. Um, and all of this has been proven with research or supported with research. And, and while it's not always the case, it's important to acknowledge these, these, uh, these items because that can be very serious sometimes. Um, and then codependency. Codependency comes from one person enabling another's addiction or their, their poor mental health, immaturity, any, any kind of behavior that they could address in a more healthy way that they're instead just supporting or encouraging and, and allowing it to happen. Um, and, and this is important, this factors into enablement because it could, you could be the enabler or the one being enabled. But in either case, it's important to take note like, and try and understand that because in the long run, it harms both parties involved. All right, so if any of these things resonate with you or you feel like maybe you are in an unhealthy relationship and you're starting to kind of freak out or anything like that, you're not alone. It's a lot more commonplace than you could think. So for instance, nearly half of all women and men in the United States have experienced psychological aggression by an intimate partner in their lifetime. 
44% of lesbian women, 61% of bisexual women, and 35% of heterosexual women experience rape, physical violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner in their lifetime. And the 2015 U.S. Transgender Survey found that more than half of respondents experienced some form of intimate partner violence, including acts involving coercive control and physical harm. So these statistics show that if you're experiencing any degree of an unhealthy relationship, you aren't the only one by any standard. These statistics also show that some of our most vulnerable populations are even more at risk, and it's very important to keep this in mind. If you or someone in your life could be experiencing this type of relationship, you are, <laughs> we have some resources that we can connect you to because uh, you're not alone and it's not your fault at all. So how can you implement healthy relationships in your life? Set boundaries. First off, it's important to evaluate how you affect people and how they affect you. Think about the energy they radiate off and how they make you feel. If someone is bothering you, be assertive and clear in communicating because it leaves little room for guessing or assuming and little opportunity for negative feelings between people who care about each other. Be honest in what you're feeling. Advocate for your needs in a way that supports you and the relationship. It's important for you to check in with yourself and what you feel comfortable with sharing. You can be as open or as private as you want with your relationships about what you find necessary and what you feel like sharing, and it's okay if the person doesn't know the same things about you. Respect each other's time and privacy. Healthy relationships require space. Your partner doesn't have to share every little thing with you if they don't feel comfortable, and you don't have to share every little thing with them. Keep the give-take part of your relationship in check. The give and take doesn't have to be 50-50 all the time, but it should balance out. And compromise when you are facing a disagreement. Disagreements and little arguments are normal in relationships, but finding a way to compromise is really important. Try to solve conflicts in a fair and rational way. Um, and this word cloud just kind of summarizes the main takeaways from this presentation regarding what a healthy relationship should look like. Each relationship is different, of course, but some of the most important things to remember in a healthy relationship include setting boundaries and having good communication. You should feel connected to and supported by your partner, but independence and privacy is still a very important thing to have. Remember, if your relationship doesn't sound or look like this, it's okay. You're not alone, and there are many resources available for you. All right, so here are some resources that we compiled. Um, I'm gonna go through and just sort of describe some of these. Um, we also have all the links in the chat that we already put in there at the beginning. So first there's UAB Student Counseling Services, and right now with everything going on, we have telehealth. Um, so you would call that number and you'd be able to schedule a telehealth appointment with a counselor or have an intake appointment. Uh, and then the National Domestic Violence Hotline, which is available 24 seven, you can either call that number that's uh, on the screen or you can text love is to 22522. And then they also have an online chat option at that website. And then there's the RAIN Sexual Assault Hotline. That one also has a phone number and a texting line and then an online chat as well at their website. And there's a Birmingham Crisis Center, also a 24-hour hotline. And UAB has their own crisis text line, which you can see right there. You just text UAB to 741741, and you can talk to a counselor and get somebody who can help you. And then we also listed some specific resources for the LGBTQ plus community. So we have the Trevor Project, Trevor Lifeline, where you can also call or online chat and also text, so you would just text start to 678678, and there's a Magic City Acceptance Center, which usually does um, drop-in hours every Tuesday and Thursday, but right now they're doing it remotely on Discord, actually, so you can just go on their Instagram or their Facebook, um, just find their social media and ask them for the information if you're interested, and then you can also call them at that phone number. All right, um, so these are just some other mental health ambassador events that are going on right now. So there's Treat Yourself Tuesday. That's um, the next one's gonna be the 14th. And then after that, it's the 21st. And you can learn more about the arts and mental health and how to take care of yourself. And then there's Wellness Wednesdays, which we're a part of. This is one Wellness Wednesday. We're healthy relationships. 
Uh, the next one's gonna be how to help a friend on April 15th, and then there's dark humor on the 22nd. And then there's the YouTube channel launch, which just happened. So you just look up UAB Mental Health Ambassadors. We're gonna have all the videos that we've done uh, put up there, as well as some other suggestions. Um, as well as some other suggestions for some other videos that could be pretty informational. And then there's the guided meditations that's going to be on Mondays. And then there we have the Friday focus with Dr. Christine Hurst by check. And then the virtual yoga Thursday, which is every Thursday in April, 1130 to 12. So yeah, you have a lot of resources. Thank you. <laughs> if y'all have any um, questions or anything, you can e reach out to Dr. Lanzi um, at her email. Um, if y'all have any questions, y'all can ask us now. You can ask in the chat. I just wanted to share, you guys did a great job. Really proud of you. That was um, really good information. And that was a lot to kind of unpackage in a short amount of time. Um, and, and I think I love the fact that you added all of these additional resources for others. And, um, and just reminding everyone that we will have these available uh, on our YouTube channel, which is just UAB Mental Health Ambassadors. Um, this will be up this afternoon if you um, want to uh, see it again or get some of these resources as well. Um, so you can feel free to, if you do have some questions, put it in the chat and we can revisit that also at the end um, of this. We're so thankful to have um, Dr. And then maybe um, Andrew, if you wanna stop sharing your screen now. Um, and uh, Dr. Christine Hurst, Vice Check, the Associate Dean for the Honors College who has, um, blessed us with doing Monday and Wednesday um, guided mindfulness exercises and on our Wellness Wednesday and I've helped us reflect on what we just learned and do a mindfulness exercise. So welcome Dr. Hurst Weisschick. Thank you. Hi folks. It's a real pleasure to be with you again today and thank you to Dr. Lanzi and to the mental health ambassadors for inviting me back. In keeping with today's topic on healthy relationships, I'd like to talk briefly about the most important relationship you will have in your life, and that is the relationship with yourself. And the relationship that you have with yourself and the care invest and investment that you put into that relationship has a direct impact on every other relationship you will have. So that is why self-care is so vital. And the mental health ambassadors have done a wonderful job addressing that, so I won't repeat their work here. You know what to do. And I'm sure that you all know that every single one of us will fall off the wagon now and then and not take care of ourselves as best as we would like. But your job is to simply notice when you're not doing as well as you'd like and to simply try again. It can also be easy to dismiss a few minutes of silence every day as a kind of self-care. But the fact is that a few minutes of sitting in silence every day helps us manage our impulses, control our emotions, and helps us make more productive choices in our lives. So the simple act of redirecting our attention rewires our brains in such a manner that all of these things are possible. So I applaud all of you for taking this time for yourselves. And I hope that you take a moment to congratulate yourselves for showing up for this kind of work. It's not easy, but it's so important. It might feel like a small thing, but like all small things, it adds up over time and makes a real difference in your lives. So let's take a moment to settle into our chairs or onto the floor for a short body scan meditation. In this exercise, we are simply going to bring our awareness to what is happening in our bodies at this moment. You might find tension, discomfort, pain, tingling, relaxation, or nothing at all. All sensations, whether you are inclined to label them as positive or negative, are equal. Our job is simply to notice what is present and to refrain from judgment. 
So we'll take a moment now and then to see if we can release any tension that may be present. And you may find that tension lessens. You may find that nothing happens at all. And in that case, your job again is to simply observe what is happening or not happening and refrain from judgment. So let's start by getting comfortable with both feet on the floor, allowing your eyes to close if you wish, or if you prefer, simply allow your gaze to lower and unfocus slightly. So take a moment to take a long, deep breath and to enjoy the sensation of that long breath. And take another deep breath and one more. So let's begin with our faces. Notice your forehead, the muscles around your mouth, your tongue, the muscles in your cheeks. What do you notice now? And is there anything that you would like to release? Notice your neck, the back of your neck, the front of your neck, and the sides. You're welcome to move or not, or you can simply allow your attention to rest there. Notice what is present. And if there is tension, see if you can let go of it. And move to your shoulders, front and back. Is there anything that is tight that you might release? And moving from your shoulders to your upper arms. What is present there now? Moving to your lower arms. Noticing what is there. Releasing what you don't want keeping what you do. And your hands, the palms, each finger. And moving to your back, between the shoulder blades, the low back, what is present, what is necessary. And moving to the front of your torso, the chest and the belly. If you notice any tension or that you're holding on to anything, try imagining directing your breath to that spot.
and moving on to your hips, your glutes. Is there anything that you can let go of there? And now bringing your attention to your thighs, both front and back. What is present for you now? And your lower legs, calf muscles, knees. What is present and what is necessary? And your feet, your toes, the arches of your feet. And now I invite you to allow your attention to take a slow scan up and down your body, noticing what is preg present. giving thanks to your body for the work it does for you every day. And to take one deep breath and another. And one more. And take a moment to be grateful for taking this time for yourselves. And when you hear the bell, open your eyes. <laughs>